Hi, I'm Pam from New Wire Marine. And probably the number one question I get is how to wire a 10 pin switch. So that's what I'm gonna help you with today and hopefully take the scariness away and explain it to you so you can do it yourself at home. First, let's kind of describe this switch and their pin functions so it really makes it a little bit easier to understand. All four of these switches are on, off, on switches. All four of them, same function. And the function is really determined with the six pins that are in the center of the switch. Six pins here, six pins here, six pins here, and the six pins right in the center here. The extra terminals are the lamps only, a dependent lamp or an independent lamp. Dependent and independent lamps, what are they? Dependent lamps are actually wired internally inside of the switch. This one has no lamps, okay? This switch is actually a seven pin. It has one terminal on top that's a ground Still has two lamps on the front, but the lamps are dependent, meaning that they're internally wired in the switch. You don't have to provide anything else, but the ground needs to be wired, and then this switch will light up in the on and the off positions with dependent lamps. These two switches here have independent lamps, so they've got terminals on the outside of the switch, they've got a ground. Ground's always in the top, uh, where, <laughs> top left, right position of the switch. So you've got two grounds here, and then you've got power for your lamps on the other side. Those have to be powered up to make the independent lamps work. They're not wired internally like the dependent lamp switches. The independent lamps are gonna be used normally as a label backlight. So it's independent of the function of the switch and can be powered by another switch, typically a nav anchor switch. So you would have power coming from the output of your nav switch, for instance, to the power input for the independent lamp to make it work. On a dependent lamp, remember, the only thing you have to do is wire the ground and it's gonna light up when you flip the switch back and forward. It's gonna make those lamps light up depending on which position you're in. That's all you have to do with a dependent lamp. So hopefully that explains the difference between the independent and the dependent lamps. What we're gonna now talk about are the poles of the switch. These switches are called double pole, double throw switches, which means they have two poles or two separate sides of the switch that you can power up individually. And they have four outputs. The outputs are side by side though two here and two here. Inputs I like to describe as the belly of the switch. The center of the switch has two inputs, the number two pin and the number five pin. And if you want to use both sides, both poles, you have to have both sides of the switch powered up. So you have to have power coming into the number two pin and into the number five pin. Okay, now comes the fun part. I'm gonna show you how to go from this to that. Don't be scared. So this usage is for a nav anchor switch powering all of the label backlights across your panel. It's, it's really tight on the back of a 10 pin switch, the, it, 10 terminal, I call them pins, terminals. So no, I'm talking about a terminal when I say pin. Anyway, um, it's really tight on the back of that switch and it will drive you mad sometimes. And we now offer jumpers on New Wire Marine that are specifically to help you with these tight switches, help you wire it easier. So we've got a bifurcated or a three connector jumper. So you've got a larger uh, female quick connect on this end that has two wires that are bifurcated and inside of that uh, connector and then you can go to two additional places. N oh, we also have a lot of these, which are great. These are uh, jumper wires that have a female quick connect on one end and then a piggyback on the other end. So this, when it goes down to, onto a spade, turns one spade into two. 
So very cool stuff. And you can find these on New Wire Marine. Okay, so here's what you're gonna need jumper wise to wire a nav anchor switch. And that's a 10 terminal nav anchor switch. You're gonna need two piggyback terminals. You're gonna need one blue jumper with piggyback, one black with a piggyback, and that's there. Let me turn that over so you can see it. And then two bifurcated three connector jumpers. So we have your 10 terminal switch here. This is the one we're gonna focus on right now. Remember these are the same function, but we're focusing on the 10 pin because it's so crowded in here and it's the one that people have the most problems actually wiring. So we need to power up this switch. Remember we discussed that it had two poles, okay? This is pole one, this is pole two. Now I'm only talking about the functionality here. These are pins for the lamps, the ground and the power, ground and power for the lamps. Okay, that's all those are for. The poles and the functionality are these six terminals in the center, six terminals, six terminals, okay? So we've got to power up this switch. We're gonna provide power to the belly of the switch, the center of the switch, right here on terminals two and terminals five. So I'm gonna use this beautiful bifurcated jumper and I'm gonna just press it down onto the number two pin and then onto the number five pin. And now this is gonna connect to your breaker. Generally the breaker's below or above, but normally below the switch. And you're gonna connect this to the power output of your breaker. When that's done, your switch is powered up. You flip it back and forth and you're gonna have power coming out of both out or all four outputs. So if I press the top of the switch, right? Turn the top of the switch on, I'm gonna have power coming out kind of the exact opposite of what the push is on the front. I'm gonna have power coming out of these two pins on the bottom. When I press the bottom of the switch, I'm gonna have power coming out of these two pins on top. These two pins are the one and the four. These two pins here are the three and the six. So top push, power comes out on the three and the six. Bottom push, power comes out on the one and the four. Okay, so now your switch is all powered up. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna jump the ground. So on this switch, remember you have two grounds for each, or one ground for each lamp. So you've got two grounds on the switch. I'm gonna use the piggyback side right here and put that on top and by the way i'm determining the bottom of the switch with this little tab here you can pull it off when you're done but it's there and it really helps you easily see what the top and the bottom of the switch are so all right i'm going to take this ground and i'm going to put it down on that ground and then i'm going to jump it down here to the bottom ground okay seven pin or terminal nine terminal Okay, those are, those are both of the grounds. So now my switch is grounded, now my lamps are gonna work, right? No, my lamps aren't gonna work yet because I don't have power to them. That's the big deal. If I had, like with this switch, when I have power or ground coming in, these lamps are gonna work because they're de dependent. These lamps are independent. They're gonna have to have power from something. So now with a nav anchor switch, I'm going to want them to light up when I flip the switch back and forward in the on position, the nav in the anchor position. Okay. I'm also going to want the nav lights to provide power to all the rest of the backlights along the switch panel. Okay. Now we're going to add these piggybacks to the places they need, and you'll see why they're needed in just a minute. But right now I'm just going to add them simply because it's easy to add them right now. All right, so the first one I'm gonna add right next to the ground, which is the number seven pin, I'm gonna add it onto the number eight pin, okay? That's the, the power for the top lamp. All right, now I'm gonna add on the bottom here on the number 10 pin, which is the power for the bottom lamp, I'm gonna add this piggyback as well. Okay, now I'm gonna take this bifurcated jumper and I'm gonna jump power from the output of the bottom position of the switch, which is for the nav lights, right? That's the number one terminal. I'm gonna jump it down to the number six terminal, which is cross the panel here. Sorry, this is, gonna be out. This is getting a little tricky. Hang on one second and turn it around. 
Okay, it's going to go to the number six terminal. So now when I turn on the nav lights, the anchor lights are going to light up as well. I'm having an issue with this one. You just wait till you're wiring this thing. <laughs> All right, now that I got that one seated on the number six, I'm going to jump down here to the number 10 pin. Why? Because I want that lamp to light up when the anchor lights are on. So that lamp's going to light up now with this jumper series when the switch is in the nav anchor position and in the anchor position only. So that's what makes that lamp work. Now we're going to wire from the output of the nav lights, which is going to be on the number three pin here. Can you see that? The number three pin up to the top lamp. So when your nav lights are on, that top lamp's going to light up. So I'm going to use the piggyback side here because this is all going to also going to be the position where the output for the nav lights is coming from. So that, that's what uh, terminal the nav lights output is going to come from as well. And then I'm going to go up to this piggyback here. All right. So now the output of my nav lights is going to light up this top lamp. For just an example, I'm going to use these two. I know this is normally the color we use for a ground, but I'm just trying to show you with different colors, the outputs. Okay. So I'm going to connect the red output for my nav lights. Okay. So the nav lights output is going to be here. Okay. Now that goes out to your nav lights. This is going to be for your anchor lights. Okay. Now we've moved all of the outputs down and here. So they're a little bit more easy to access. So your anchor lights output is actually going to come off the number 10 pin here. That's going to go to your anchor lights. That's going to go to your nav lights. All these jumpers make the nav and the anchor lights come on in the top push and the anchor lights only come on in the bottom push. Okay, now these weren't included in the jumpers that I told you you needed to actually wire the functionality of the nav light switch. Um, but they're important because generally your nav light switch is going to power the backlights across your panel. So that's what these jumpers are for. Um, the blue is representative of your backlights. So what you're going to do is you're going to just put this on this terminal. And then your black is your ground. So you're going to put this on the ground and then you're going to jump this to the next switch, the next ground and the next number eight pin. And then what's going to happen now is you've got power coming out of your nav lights output up to the number eight terminal, right? It's, which is for this top lamp. And it's also now going out to all of the other switches daisy chained in line all of their top label lamps. So at nights when you turn on your nav light switch, all of the labels light up so you can see your switches really clearly. Okay, so what if I have an additional 10 pin switch in my panel other than the nav anchor switch? We have some choices. So I'm going to show you first how to wire that additional 10 pin switch to have its lamps light up as label lamps only. Because here's the thing, with independent lamps, you can use them as label backlights or as indicator lights. You cannot use them as both. You have to choose which way you're going to use them. So in this particular scenario, for instance, this is done a lot with a hatch switch or something that's momentary in two positions because you want those labels to light up at night so you can see them. So what I'm going to do is show you now how to do that. All right. So we've got the output here. You remember we jumped up from the nav position output up to the top lamp. Now we're going to jump power to the next top lamp. Okay. Okay. So now I'm just wiring all these number eight pins from switch to switch to switch. 
okay? But when I get to this last switch, I, I know that's a 10 pin too, but just ignore that. It's just for demonstration purposes. I'm pretending like this is my only 10 pin switch here. All right, so when I get to this switch, I'm gonna wire the top lamp to light up, right? But then I wanna wire this bottom lamp to light up too, because it doesn't have any power right now. It needs to have power from somewhere, and I want it to come on when the nav lights are on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump from here, which is the output of the um, backlights, okay? And I'm gonna jump down to the number 10 pin, which is the power for the bottom lamp, okay? So now we've got the power flowing out of the nav lights to here, then to there, then to there, then to there, then to the bottom lamp as well. So let's say this is a hatch light, like I said before, both the top lamp and the bottom lamp are now gonna light up to show you hatch up, hatch down. Guess what? We gotta continue with the grounds too, cause it ain't gonna work unless you have the ground wire. So we're gonna just jump the grounds the same way, same manner. All right, jumping the ground down on there. And then the ground goes to here. And I like to try to turn them around so the, you know, the output spades are facing the same direction. And now I need to jump that ground down to the bottom ground here. Get those out of the way. Sometimes if it's, if it's you know, cumbersome, you can go underneath and between, okay? And to the ground here, okay? So now both the top lamp and the bottom light lamp are grounded and powered up. So they're gonna work when you turn on the nav lights. They're gonna come on. Okay, remember we had um, the switch wired so that both lamps were labeled lamps, okay, triggered by the nav lights. That's a, usually what people choose to do when it's a hatch switch or something that's a momentary switch in three positions. Now, for a latching switch that's an on-off on switch, you usually want to know when the switch is on, some way, somehow. Um, you're using this top lamp as a backlight because if you didn't use it as a label backlight, it would look black. You know, when you turn the nav lights on, it wouldn't light up and it'd look like something was wrong with the switch. So we're still keeping this as a label backlight on top. We're gonna to take the bottom lamp now and we're gonna use it as an indicator lamp for both positions of the switch. You're not gonna know necessarily which position you've got the switch in, but you will know that the switch is on. That's the most popular way that we find that people wanna wire this. So I'm gonna take this bifurcated, lovely bifurcated jumper from New Wire Marine here, and I'm gonna place this down on the number six terminal there. I'm gonna jump it up to the number four. Okay, that's right by the number one. That's your, you know, output. And then I'm going to also jump it down to the lamp, the, the power terminal for the lamp down here. Okay, that's the number 10 pin. Okay, so we're jumping from the number one to the number six to the number 10. Now, when we flip the switch back and forth, we still got two outputs here, okay? Output for the top push on the switch, output for the bottom push. So now when we push the switch in either position, the lamp, bottom lamp's gonna light up and tell you that the switch is on. <laughs>